Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. So today's Pick a Card reading was inspired by my recent receipt of a new tarot deck that I backed on Kickstarter, which is the beautiful Unfolding Path deck, so uh, Unfolding Path Tarot deck, so that's what we're going to be using in this reading. And I thought that title inspired me to ask the question, are you on the right path? So today we're going to be looking first at what the path might be, then we're going to use an oracle that's designed by the same creator as this particular tarot deck to ask the question, is that the right path? If, and then depending upon the answer, we'll ask particular other questions from tarot, from spirit, to get more information on how best to either continue and, and benefit from the path or course correct or change the path, depending upon the answer. And then we'll have a look at some supports for you and other information. So that's the nature of the reading. To help with the choice, there's three piles to choose from. You are more than welcome to go to more than one if you have more than one path that you'd like to consider. But what I've done is I've taken three major arcana cards out of the deck. They will be shuffled back into the deck, so they may or may not turn up in the reading that they have been assigned to here. But they were meant to represent different types or stages on journeys or pathways. So pile one has the Fool. So that's that sense of the new journey, something on an uncharted territory, something that you're excited about, hopeful about, all of those sorts of things. Pile two is the high priestess. So an inward journey, a spiritual journey, a journey of intuition, a journey across the dimensions, whatever that might be. And pile three has the world. So that could be the next step, leveling up, having completed one journey, going to the next level in some way. It could also be travel in the world, you know, and, and the exploration and expansion of the mind in various ways. So it's just meant to represent three different types of pathways you could be on. It may help you with choosing. There's no guarantee that's the energy that we're going to see in these particular readings. It was just chosen for that reason to help with the, the pile choice. And you, of course, as I say, can go to more than one. So you may choose by numbers. You may choose by the imagery, by what the card says to you. Could be anything. If you have to pause to, to contemplate, by all means do that. But when you do know what reading or readings you want to go to, the timestamps are in the description box below. And I'll see you there. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So we're going to start firstly with asking about the nature of the pathway that you are on, the one that you are thinking about in relation to this reading and get a bit of a sense about the overarching energies. And we'll use the oracle to see whether it's the right pathway for you and build from there. So firstly, for part number one, what is the nature of the pathway they are on? Nature and energies. Okay, so this looks like you're on a pathway. There's one of two ways of reading this, and we'll, it'll be interesting to see what the oracle says about whether it's the right pathway for you. Because on one level, this could be saying that you are on a pathway to win back recognition, esteem, and so forth for something you've put a lot of effort into, but it hasn't returned. You haven't had the decisions. You haven't had the opportunities that you want. And so you're kind of rectifying something. If that's the case, it looks like you've gone within within the hermit and tried to work out what is it, how do you best use your energy, what do you do, because you want to break out of a sense of an emotional blockage, but you're not yet ready to make the decision or take the action to do something. Like you might literally at this point need to rest, but it's a pathway, I think, as I say, for some of regaining recognition, for others it may be already an indication that you're on a pathway of diminishing returns, that there was something to learn from it, but that the choices that you would hope to get for the efforts that you put in and the recognition that you were hoping to get is not manifesting. And this was meant to, to bring you towards a greater capacity to make a decision, which would be likely to course correct. So there's certainly a sense of a lot of energy, creative energy, action and so forth, lots of burdens. You want to relieve yourself of that burden. You want to clear this energy where you're not getting the recognition, but it's like there are some material choices you can't make yet because you're going through this process of internalizing and looking at it from a spiritual perspective so i feel like it's very much something in the material world i feel like it is about recognition or passion in some way something creative but you are holding yourself from taking a decision at the moment 
And there is some time to do that. With judgment reverse, it does suggest that you have a bit of time to do that. It's not like the options will disappear. But it may be that if you delay too long, no decision becomes a decision. So there's something about energy here. There's something about recognition. And there's something about going back to the, the sort of spiritual roots of what this was about. So let's see if that's the case. I think this is about you getting your the recognition that you should should have and I think it's about you finding a material outcome you know that that does bring you that that does bring you victory but I think one of the questions might be and it'll be interesting to see with the oracle we're going to use is is this putting too much energy into something that's not going to get it so you need to recalibrate and shift do you need to make a decision because this is a a a cause that's not going to work for you or is it one that you could course correct or even continue with because you're close and you could be close with Ten of Wands reversed. You could be ready to let down the burden. So there's a very tiny oracle that I got from the person who made this wonderful tarot deck, which is really a kind of a expanded yes-no type of deck. So we're just going to ask for one card for pile one that tells us whether or not this is the right pathway, or at least gives us some information, if it's not that distinctly yes or no, to, to help work out what the best next questions are to help you on the pathway or shifting from the pathway. So for you, we get, yes, okay. So yes, you are on the right path. All right, so what that is telling us is that, that you're close. But there will be a decision, I think, that you need to make. You're not making it yet. It's also probably saying it's okay, as I say, for a little bit of time. But And there's some contemplation about this. Why did you not necessarily, or why have you not necessarily yet got the victory or the recognition that you deserve? What's going on? I think that's the thing to consider. So let's ask, what, what do you know at the moment that can help you navigate this pathway? If this is the right pathway for you to be on, what do you know already about it? Okay, you know already that you're meant to do something very much as an entrepreneur or as your own person. You know that there are people around you who would compete with you. You know there are people who are being critical of what you're doing. They're trying to get in the way. This is why there's all the extra energy around it. So if this was around a career, you know that maybe you're meant to sort of step up into a higher role or go out and run your business, for instance. But you know that there are people who are naysayers at the moment that you have to deal with. You might also have your own inner critic. If that's the case in this hermit mode, you need to really consider, are you being fair on yourself? Are you almost having an expectation? Are you putting in too much effort for the reward that you get because nothing is ever good enough and you're a perfectionist? So that's a possibility as well too. But I do feel with the king of wands here reversed along with the queen of swords, I do feel as though there are people around you that are critical and are competitive. And so you know that even though maybe you would have wanted to work with these people, connect with them, or if it's a love relationship, you know that it's a relationship that's always going to be critical and and concerning for you. So it may be the decision, the pathway may be to make the decision to move on. It depends what the path is that you're thinking that yes answer is for. But I feel like for most of you, this is about something where you want personal recognition and you know that you're going to have to kind of do that yourself. You know that there are certain emotional patterns with the Eight of Cups reversed here that just can't shift in the current with the current people. It's, that's not going to shift. And you know that all that's doing at the moment is stopping you from enjoying what you want to enjoy. So this is really, I think it's a decision. I think you're on a pathway to, to be more independent in one or more ways. And this, I mean, it could even be if it's not around career, it could be like leaving home, you know, if you're young or, or whatever. There might be a sort of sense of your parents will always be too controlling and not appreciating what you want to do and it's time for you to kind of recognize that and start to sort of reopen your heart so certainly you know that you need to make the decision that others around you are not the right ones to make the decision for you even if you've been avoiding the decision a bit so what don't you see that could be helpful for you on your pathway since spirit wants you to to take this through to it you know take it through to whatever the decision is that you're kind of considering at the moment what don't you see that could be helpful for you to know
So what you don't see at the moment, I think you kind of know that there's these battles, but what you don't see is that you've been looking for this sort of happy connection in the wrong places. That, and that it is possible to let that pattern go. You know, it is possible to move past that sort of sense of like emotional, emotionally being stuck. But there's something about this pathway, I have to say, that is individual. It doesn't mean that you can't be in a relationship. It doesn't mean you couldn't work with other people. But I think that at the moment, you don't know how much faster and how much more fortunate you can work if you do just do things yourself. You're underestimating that. All this effort that you put in to try and get the recognition of other people, if you put that effort into just doing what you want to do, then you're going to move very, very, very fast and towards a very, very good outcome. It may ruffle some feathers, though. You may even underestimate that. So if this is around friends, family, or even like people who are former co-workers, there's going to be some pushback. People are going to be jealous, I think, to be frank, because they'll see you moving very fast. But you don't know how much this will actually liberate you emotionally. It's almost as though... You kind of know in a way that it's emotional, but I feel like this is in career or something like that. It feels like it's something that you wouldn't necessarily think, oh, this is an emotional thing, but but it is having an emotional impact and you don't you don't know how fast you'll be able to move once you make that decision to, to do what you want to do. Now, if you are obviously in a workplace and you don't have anywhere else to go yet, I always put the caveat, you know, make sure that your finances are okay, it's ready to go, it might be planning towards that. Yes, doesn't necessarily mean you have to instantly make this decision because it's saying you've got a bit of time but you should be planning towards something that is more more fulfilling to you and more entrepreneurial as I say more who you really are as opposed to trying to meet the sort of requirements and the, the dictates of other people you're going to move much faster than you expect so let's get you some various sort of like aspects of what this means so we'll look firstly at kind of the spiritual aspects around this and that kind of makes sense that we would anyway for you because the hermit is there. So there is something spiritual about this. There's something about your pathway. So we're just going to get a couple of cards to show some of the lights on the, the, the road, so to speak, spiritually for you. Things to contemplate in making this decision and taking that step towards independence. Veiled, the long dark night. Yeah, you've been through something. It's been really disappointing. It's been really unfair, I have to say. But out of that, you start to understand your own strength. And rise up like the phoenix. There you go. It's going, you're going to go so much faster than you expect. And like spiritually, there's a really strong sort of energy around this. So Veiled, the long dark night, it, it's about that sort of sense of like, you know, I felt blocked, I felt stuck, I haven't been able to manifest, I haven't you know, felt spiritually connected, all of these things. This was a process for you to start to understand the dynamics behind it, Polan, which is other people, I have to say, in your case. It's not, it's not really something within you or a shadow within you. I mean, there's possibility sometimes that what we meet in other people is shadow within ourselves. We have to have to sort of respond to but that's not always the case i mean sometimes you just meet people and they behave badly and i think this has happened for you but i think you're you're coming out of that that's why we've got phoenix rise up this card it talks about from the ashes of past come the birds of the flame you will rise victorious so you will have the victory so we had the victory card reversed right now on your path you haven't had the victory you deserved but but good fortune karma you know, is coming for you once you once you determine that this is your pathway, not what, what anybody else is telling you to do. So I also want to use the Life at Sea Oracle deck to get some other sort of almost more 3D things. So if this is the spiritual pathway, understanding the truth of you, what you've experienced and that you're ready to rise, what kind of energies can you sort of either deal with or leverage as you make the decisions and you do this pathway towards more independence. Understanding. Emerge. So the under, this, the actual, the, on a 3D level, what's happening spiritually is very much aligning. Like as you, as you come to an understanding, you see the lights coming in the darkness there, the sun is emerging. Like it's, there is a sense of understanding about the pattern and what this was and what this meant and what you went through allows you to emerge like out of, uh, this is literally like out of a cave or something into the light again. There's a lot about the light and illumination here, like the phoenix, the sort of fire of the phoenix and so forth. So you are just meant to have 
come to an understanding and a ha moment about this. You're on the right path, but other people were telling you it wasn't or they were limiting you. Once you understand, you start to liberate yourself a bit, and then you can move forward more with it. So let's get you some supports. Let's get you a couple of goddess or archetype energies to work with you, and then we'll get a couple of divine animal totems as well. Fortuna. Oh, look, you can't, you can't write home about this. You are meant to, to with fortune there, you are meant to go into good fortune. You are meant to rise victorious. So fortuna is there to, to help make sure that things get balanced. Something unfair has happened to you, but you're, if you just stick to this path and you stick more to your independence, then you're going to rise, pile one. And the mother. Okay. So this could suggest, as I say, it could be something if the Queen of Swords reversed is sort of a maternal figure around you. It could be that you are having a stronger, more nurturing sort of archetypal energy around you so that you can mother yourself. It could also be that you know, for some of you, your mother may in fact be a very strong support for you and one that would actually support what you're trying to do and, and give you that nurturing. It could be mothering yourself as well, but it's certainly a sense of creative emergence and, and being able to start to to move into your fortune. And it's interesting with the mother and fortune because I wanted to put, even though fortune came out first, I wanted to put it there because of the wheel of fortune. So it in a sense almost then gives a narrative that goes in that direction, which is you start to birth your own fortune. You become the mother of your own fortune. Let's see what divine animals could support you as well, pile one. Armadillo, groundedness. Yeah, there's something in the environment that you're in where people have kind of played games, mental games, emotional games or whatever. Armadillo will help you ground this and move forward, help you make that material decision with the Two of Pentacles reverse that you're kind of holding off on. And sea otter, transformation. Yeah, this is the phoenix rising. People, people won't see you coming really and this is a profound transformation to become more of who you are. So to finalise, I just want to get you some astrology energy and then we're going to have a card from the golden path just for final piece of advice to synthesise the path that you're on. So, Moon, Saturn, okay, and Capricorn. Yeah, this is definitely, I think for most of you, if you've come to the right reading, this is around career, it's around money making, it's around status in the world in some way, it's around power in the world in some way with Capricorn. Saturn, it has taken some time and it has had some fairly strict and somewhat severe lessons, but they're important lessons. And when you use Saturn really well, when you take from that and you move forward with that wisdom, you have a much stronger foundation to go with. There's also a very strong spiritual aspect to this, psychic aspect to this, getting to the core of who you are. That's the important thing. This is going through the, the, the dark night and with the moon perhaps being the first light of illumination to bring you out and then finding the sun and the fire energy and so forth but it, this may have felt like it was really slow but it was it is meant to give you a sense of really something solid and 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 lasting as well okay so last but not least we're going to just get one card from the wisdom of the golden path so anything else that spirit wants to say to sum this up for the path that you are on at the moment for one Goddess of Oneness. Well, that's rather beautiful because that works on a few levels. On one level, it works on literally that, that you are one and your independence and all of that sort of thing. A goddess to sort of like help you have that sense of independence, that sense of heart connectedness. And also, so you've got greens and yellows there. So the solar plexus, personal power and the green for the heart, being connected to the heart and like moving through some of the sort of emotional disappointments and so forth. But it also says that on another level, we are all one. So even those who have stood in your way or have been difficult, there is a capacity there potentially as you rise and you can almost see that that was necessary for you to fully come into your power and who you were. There's almost a sense that there could be a forgiveness and an understanding as well. Certainly, if you feel that people were deliberately duplicitous or horrible, then there's no reason that you have to stay connected to them. But there's something about what has occurred that is allowing you to rise. And so there is a kind of a perfection, a kind of a beginning and an end, you know, a kind of a, a balance in all of this that's going to come in. And it's all around the right timing. 
So I hope that that resonates for you, Pole One. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pole Two, to your reading. So we're going to start off firstly with the tarot asking for a bit of information about the energies and nature of the path that you're on at the moment, the path that you are thinking about. Then, then we're going to use an oracle to sort of see whether it looks like it's the right path and go from there in terms of what we need to ask. But firstly, just at a high level for Pile 2 Spirit, what is the sort of energy and aspects of the path that they are on at the moment? It's interesting, most of these cards came up in another reading, but in different contexts, and I have shuffled a lot in between. They didn't always come up in the same aspect either, but there may be some sort of people who are going to a couple of readings. So this is a pathway towards fortune and towards good fortune, I think. So, or at least it's tilting towards that. That's what you're aiming for, to sort of bring your fortunes up. There may be a sort of sense of dissatisfaction with where you are in the world. So I think it's sort of like whether that's in love, whether that's in a career, whether it's creatively, even whether it's spiritually, I think there's sort of something. And it's coming off the back of a decision that you've made. It, and the decision came from sort of fairly significant things happening in your life, maybe towards somebody who was very critical of you, somebody who was sharp or difficult. You may have actually cut someone out of your life as a result of this because you felt like they were getting in the way of you being able to move towards fortune and believing in yourself. Or it may be that this is calling upon you to make that sort of a decision because there's something, there's an energy of criticism or, you know, at worst sort of spitefulness and nastiness and gossip and that kind of thing that could be occurring for some of you. Uh, and, and, you know, people judging you, people not being happy with who you are. Maybe some even judging you because they're jealous of good fortune that you've had. So there's a, there's a few energies around this, but there's something to do with good fortune, with judgment, you know, choices and so forth, and with a critique. And and as a result, your pathway, even though I feel like you're, you're heading in the right direction, though we'll see what the oracle says about whether or not this is exactly the right path, I feel like you're a bit dissatisfied. It's really interesting that we've got both the king and the queen of swords reversed here. It could be that that is two aspects of a, a similar sort of person and they're very powerful in some way, like they're a boss or they're a teacher or they're a, you know, somebody who has some sort of like control over your life in some way or parental figures that were kind of cold and distant and so forth. Or it could be a couple of people that are operating in the environment and one's more critical and one's less trustworthy. And it could be for some of you around love. So you could be around someone that you're just not sure because there seems to be a lot of mind games and you you thought this is like very karmic, very much fortune, but something's not quite taking with this. So it sort of depends. I, it just looks to me like you are on the right path, but whether you're with the right people is another matter. So let's see what the oracle has to say. So it's just a very small oracle that has different sorts of yes, no, and other sort of similar kind of advice. So what we're asking for poll two is, given what it looks like that, that on one level the path they're on is heading towards good fortune, but there's something about other people's energy or internal critique or something and, and the judgments of the world or the judgments of others that is maybe blocking some of the heart connection involved in whatever this is, are they on the right path at the moment for them, for their highest good? Not the right time. Okay. So this may mean that that you, you are going to move to fortune and you will be able to make the decisions that you need to make, but there are opportunities or situations that may not be the right ones or it may not be the right time. So if this is around love and this is aspects of a person, you know, like kind of, as I say, a bit distant, a bit critical, a bit mind gamey, it might not mean that the person is wrong, but it might mean that they're not ready to sort of show their heart at the moment. If it's a a thing that you're trying to do, you know, you're just getting getting somewhere in your career or whatever, and you're getting these sort of difficulties. It may be saying that you are, you are on the right path, 
but it may not be the right time to fully show what you want to do with this because the environment may not be right. So let's see, given that, that's a sort of interesting and kind of equivocal sort of answer because it's not saying you're on the wrong path, but it's saying there's something about timing. Let's ask what you could see and know at the moment that would be helpful for you to work out what is the right timing. If this is the right path, but possibly not quite the right time to act, what would help you know what was the right time to act? Okay, so this is talking about two different things. So I think we've got people who've come here and it's around a relationship and for, and for others it's around maybe career or something like that. So looking at the relationship first and going back to this, then there may be someone that you're connected with and it's not the right time for them or they are indicative of someone that you would be connected to. So it might be very much a mental connection. This may not be the right person. This is why the blockages are occurring. And you're, so Because I think that what can happen sometimes with really key relationships in our lives is sometimes we meet a version of it before we meet the right one. And they seem, seem about the kind of thing that you'd be looking for and you would want to open your heart, but it's not the right time because it's not the right person. If that's the case, it's saying that, yes, the, the right one hasn't really manifested yet. And there's a real, real issue for you if you went right now with the person concerned that it could get mutually obsessive or you could get obsessive or they could get obsessive with you. You, you put far too much of your self-esteem associated with this, which allows far too much power to this other person. But, but... But there is, if you know that something is coming in, but it's not quite the right one at this point in time, it allows you to, to protect your heart. If this is around career, as I say, I think it's like you are actually getting somewhere. That's why you're on the right, the right pathway. But there are people who are trying to critique you or block you in some way. So something precious that you want to do next, it's just not the right time to do it. And it may mean that there's an aspect you need to let go of because judgment is often the card that comes that if you don't make a choice right then and move forward, that the opportunity disappears. But I think if that's the case, you're still on the path towards good fortune. It just might be the next offer. So it's almost like if you were offered something from people, but you felt like there were enormous amounts of legal complexities to it or or they were going to take such control over what you were doing that it wasn't going to be joyful for you anymore it would be better to let that go because you're still on the right pathway and and maintain what you want to do if it is around something like that creative or career it's also saying you know that maybe you're still developing the skills you haven't fully got everything ready to go to the next level you can see where you are headed but you're not quite there so it could be that you're you can see that one day you'll be a CEO, for instance, in an organization, but you've still got to learn quite a lot about business skills, for instance, or or you want to be an academic, but you've just finished your undergraduate degree and you're going to have to sort of do some more stuff around, you know, a PhD or a master's or that kind of thing. So there's something about, you know, an understanding you're not quite yet at the skill level to navigate the complexity of the relationships around you and to understand almost the rules of the game. Like if this is in career, it could be in a very large organization or in a very politically difficult organization. And again, it could affect your self-esteem. So this is why the timing thing is, it's saying you're meant to be this queen of wands. You're meant to be self-actualized and, and dynamic and successful. But if you, if you don't heed the right timing and you don't make sure the skills are there in your kit bag when you move forward, then that could bring disappointment to what you want. So, okay, what don't you know that could be useful also in deciding the timing around this pathway? So it's the right pathway, whatever it is, love or, love or creativity or career, but it's not the right timing in some way. So what don't you know right now? Because this is what you know. You know there's maybe a skill issue. You know there's complex, difficult, obsessive, you know, competitive sort of environments. You know that your self-esteem is at risk if you don't get the timing right. But what don't you know? Okay, so for some of you, 
particularly like the Queen of Swords reverse, and now we've got the Empress reverse. For some of you, there is a patterning, I think, from childhood, maybe from your relationship with your mother or maternal figures, nurturing figures, teachers, something like that, that is really imprinting on you. And it may be making you want to hurry up when it's not not quite the right time, for instance, or make you allow people to play mind games with you because you feel somehow that, that you know somebody else always knows better. There's There's something about the early nurturing in your life. There's something about that kind of patterning that is affecting you and could potentially make you act quicker to try and somehow sort of prove yourself to, as I say, a parental figure or to a teacher or something like that. When in reality, you are much more powerful, much more skilled than you're giving yourself credit for. In actual fact, you're less unskilled than you're thinking. It may be simply that you know, even if you could do, you could move forward now, you're ready, you have to get certain qualifications if it's around career. And that could be right, but the skills are there. So not to let this programming and this critique get in the way because you are kind of letting that happen. It's making you think, I know that I'm on the right pathway with the three of wands, but I'm not sure if it's going to get a return. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to be successful with it. And this is because whatever this energy is at the moment, this is why the people going forward, whether it's in a love relationship, creatively, career, I don't think the people you're around at the moment are the right people in the long haul. And so delaying where you can, letting certain things go and going for something else where you can, always making pragmatic decisions, particularly if it's around money, but that there's something like that and understanding that that you you are very skilled and ready and you have a direction and it's the right direction. It's just, this is saying it's not that you're on the wrong path, but other people may not accept that you are ready yet. And so, so for you to maintain that sort of sense of direction and, and self, you need to kind of play the game a bit, but you're more than capable of playing the game. You know, the magician can deal with the devil, you know, really. The magician understands all the devil's tricks. So this is really... This is really an, an energy about understanding the environment or relationships that you're in. Okay, so given that, let's have a look at it from a spiritual perspective and then kind of more from a 3D perspective about, given it is the right pathway, but timing is involved, sort of what spirit can tell us about the spiritual aspects of this particular pathway you're on. Hidden truths, the moon gate. Yeah, there's something... There's something you're not seeing yet or there's, or you understand something that you can't yet express. There's something going on. And deception, snake in the grass. Yeah, okay. So this is in the spiritual realm. So that's interesting because we have the devil coming up and we have the magician. And I feel like the magician is, is more than a match for this, but you do need to be aware of it because I feel like the devil's coming up as like this king of swords reversed. So hidden truths is it basically says... In a hidden place lie the sacred words. It was already written. So you know, you know that you're on the right path ultimately. You know you have this destiny, but you're having to protect it. And there's other things going on, things that aren't true, things that, you know, with two sword, you know, court cards reversed, things that are actually quite duplicitous potentially around this. But you know, you know there is a truth and you have to protect that truth because there is deception, snake in the grass. This says the hidden threat disguised in the grass, a deadly precise strike. This is understanding the impact of other people if you don't understand it. And it is as much spiritual as anything. This is about you understanding who you are and not getting deflected and getting the timing right, not, not listening to these negative sort of patterns that I think have happened to you even from childhood. So... There's something really special, I think, part two, that you are meant to do or a very special relationship you're meant to be in. But it's almost like kind of dark forces are around it to try and stop it because it's special. But you've got to make sure you don't let that programming kick in. Don't, don't doubt that you can make this happen. Remember you're the magician and you're on the right path. It's just about timing. Let's see from the Life at Sea deck. What else we can hear about the pathway more on the kind of 3D level? Sensations. Seek. Okay. So this is again when we've got like the purple sort of like crown chakra type of energy around this. It's again saying there's something deeply spiritual about this. So some of you it may literally be a spiritual journey. And if you're on a spiritual journey, and you're feeling sort of 
you know, like duplicitous or deceptive energies around and you're trying to work out who to connect to, then you're probably right. There's maybe some people you need to break from and find your right people. If you feel like there's dark energy around, you probably need to put barriers around it. But for others, when this is more in a kind of creative or career or something like that, it still has a highly, highly spiritual aspect to it. You're meant to be seeking. You're meant to be being explorer. And trust the sensations that you have. If you know these people could speak with with forked tongue, with silver tongue, they could appear to be something wonderful. And if it's a relationship, somebody could appear to be wonderful, but one minute they're nice, and the next minute they're undermining you. There's just something. Go into the sensation of what's really going on. Your hidden truths, what you understand. Okay, so let's get you some supports. Let's get you some goddess or archetype energy firstly to support you in navigating this because it is a little bit of treacherous waters, but I think you are meant very much to, to get back on track and get the timing right. So what would help you with that from a kind of goddess or archetype level? Green Tara and Hera. Wow. So it's interesting given that we have the Empress reversed here and we have the Queen of Swords reversed here. Green Tara is a, a mother type figure in Buddhism and she is there to heal the heart and heal all issues you know, concerned with that. So I think many of you have come here, there's some issue around your mother or maternal figures in some way. And so Green Tara is here to heal that and to, to free you up to, to believe in yourself. But it's interesting we also have Hera. And Hera is about taking accountability. So she's another mother figure in a way, but she took accountability with Kronos in, in the Greek mythology when he was sort of trying to be a despot effectively. And there's something potentially despotic there. So there is also, she's there once you've healed to be able to take accountability for your own choices and to be able to make choices again, I think. And if some of this environment, if you feel like you messed it up a bit, if you feel like you moved too quickly, if you felt like you listened to the wrong people, she's not there to kind of castigate or anything, but she's there to say you take accountability, you learn from it and you move on because you just meant to heal and move on, but to, to understand the implications of your actions. And there's something to do with power around all of this. Power is somehow involved. So she helps you with that and staying true to what your pathway is, even when there's a lot of power and potentially some, some real sort of temptations around you as well. So let's see what animal totems can also support you. We have wolf, authenticity. I'm going to put that there. I think what she mainly wants you to, to do, what Hero mainly wants you to do, is to become more and more authentic to yourself, to heal with Green Tara over here, the sort of programming you might have had about things, so that you start to, to move from your own power and be authentic, even in environments where it might be sometimes hard to be that. And dear, power, yes, come into your own power. You do, you have power that you don't even credit yourself with. You are more than capable of this. But it's sort of like whatever it is, whether it's a relationship, if you feel you had to kind of keep proving yourself in a relationship, move on to the next relationship because, as I say, it's almost just a, a kind of harbinger of a, a better version of something and just, just own yourself in that. But if this is around career or creativity or something like that, you do have the skills. But I do think you have to bargain with the, the environment you're in, which might be why you need to get certain qualifications or whatever. But remember your power. Remember that. Remember you're just playing a game if you have to then to, to fit in with what is needed and so forth. Okay, so let's also get you some astrology for your path and then also we'll close out with a card from the golden wisdom of the golden path to bring it all together. So what's some astrology to help guide, guidance from the stars to navigate this pathway for pole two? Fifth house. Some of you, this definitely then is, well, creativity, definitely. But some of you, it is about love. So this is about healing some really deep programming, I think. Really deep programming from parental figures or early nurturing figures or early loves in your life. And, and that means it's not the right time to be in a relationship and show your heart until you've done that. Because you've been through a lot of that's the case. But, but, you know, like healing and taking accountability for any of your decisions helps you to move forward. So certainly with love, it's like, yes. It's not the right time now or the right person now, but someone's coming. Stay on the pathway of love. Believe that you can have it. If it's creative, it's it's you know around your creative authenticity. 
we have ninth house yeah so for some of you it is about who you are in the world it's about your philosophy it's about publishing it's about creative things being taken out into the world it's also about learning so for some of you going and getting qualifications is going to be important for this and you'll be in a better position once you have it even if you really have the skills it's almost like you have to prove it and that's just the system that you're in and then we have venus bringing you to then be able to deal with the page of cups to be able to to love as you want to love to to do what you want to do with beauty and with skill and to be recognized for it okay so we're just going to finish off with a card from the golden path oracle just for a final summation of the energy of this pathway for you pile two bondage wow i mean you're meant to be freed from bondage but at the moment this is why it's not the right time you're caught up in something if it's a if it's a relationship you really have to seriously think about separating out from that and having some time out because it's not one that's the one <clears throat> right now is not the right one for you but you are meant to love eventually you are meant to come to venus if this is around a workplace you are in a difficult situation but it is saying don't lose faith in what you do and don't think that you're going to constantly and always be held in bondage it's just it's almost like you have to navigate something you know the, the rules of the game whatever it is get the qualifications you know do what when in rome do as the romans do so to speak in a workplace whatever it might be but but it's at the moment you're tied up it's not the right time to take the next step but it will come you are on the right path but you just have to bargain in some way and you have to play with the rules of the game so that eventually you get above all of that and you can go towards what you want to do so i hope that this resonates for you pile two i hope it was helpful if so please like the video and subscribe and if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear otherwise i hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading so we're going to start with tarot to ask for you what is the pathway you're on in terms of the energies and the the nature of that pathway just to get a sense about what we're talking about then we're going to use an oracle to ask whether it's the right path and depending upon the answer of that there are some other things we'll ask of spirit with the tarot before moving to or other oracles so firstly for pile three spirit what is the pathway that they are on please give some information and an idea about the pathway that they are on okay this looks very much like it's about relationships could be could be sort of something with work or contractual with justice reverse but we have you know two cups cards here we have the lovers it's interesting wheel of fortune and justice reverse it looks to me like the pathway that you're on has to do with relationship probably love relationship but it could be friendships as well whatever it is it's out of balance at the moment there's a lot of a lot of potential around this but it's somehow it's out of balance so you may be on a pathway of collaboration with friends or, or people and so forth but there could be a lot of emotional fallout around of this it's not working it's not connecting that could mean that the answer is no but it could also just mean that the answer is yes but this needs to be resolved but there's something some of you may literally be on a journey and this could work and a pathway with friends to right a wrong to bring things into balance to you know some sort of community cause social justice or something like that if that's the case with the wheel of fortune it's bringing better fortune in so it's a very strong pathway to be on but if this is about a love relationship then something there's there's some really good times with it but there's also some real emotional fallout it kind of it's up and down and up and down by the looks of things and sometimes you think it's the one and sometimes you think no you know you're not being treated fairly or, or that the balance in the relationship isn't there so so if the question is am i the, on the right path with being with someone it will be interesting to see what the oracle says but this this would say that there was something a bit destined about the connection but whether it's meant to be long term or whether it was meant to teach you sort of something about emotional patterns and bringing in joy that might be the case as well if it's as i say more around something creative work or, or something like that there's something about justice something about groups something about collaboration something about bringing things back into better balance and so forth but there's possibly people 
in the midst of it that are not as committed as, say, you are. So it depends on what it is that you're asking about. What we're going to do is we're going to ask with a very small oracle here whether or not you're on the right path. So this oracle has sort of yes and no, and it has other sorts of associated types of answers. So it may be very clear or it may be a bit elliptical, but what we want to do is get a sense about what Spirit's saying about the pathway that you're on at the moment, which at best appears to be fixing up and balancing something that is out of balance to bring in the joy and, and the good fortune. At worst could be dealing with a situation that, that is not going to come into balance or is not fair in some way. But let's ask, are you on the right path? This is the sign. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a bit elliptical. So I think this is going to say that there are a lot of signs that will tell you one way or the other. And I think it's interesting that that came up where we've got almost opposite energies at either end of this. At one energy, there is a sense of fortune, things improving, things getting better. At the other end, there is some massive injustice operating. You know, and it's even within this, in some places, there's a great deal of joy around things and letting go of emotional patterns that don't work. In others, it's like never being able to, to feel that something balances. So I think it's saying that there is a sign for you about this. And it probably is saying that there are a number of different people and situations coming to this reading. So for some, they will be on the right path because they are going to right the injustice. For others, they're on the wrong path because it's never going to fully balance out no matter how much enjoyment it might have sometimes. For some, I'm getting, if this is about love, this is a significant love, and this is the sign. But because of it, it's tricky, and that's often the case with really significant love relationships. So given that equivocal sort of answer, let's ask what you can know about, what you know about and what you can use at the moment that helps you best navigate whether to either stay on this pathway or course correct because I think it's going to very much develop depend on are you feeling at the moment like you're on a you know on a cause of justice and you're going to write it and you've got the right people with you in which case I think the answer is yes it's the right this is the sign of what you're meant to be doing or do you feel like every time you you try and bring that in something is unfair or imbalanced in which case that might be the sign that it's not so let's just ask what else you can know what you, what you do know and see that can help you make that decision. Okay. So this is really interesting. In the center of this, we have hope. You are a very hopeful, optimistic person and you have a very clear idea. I think in some ways it's saying whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's be in a love relationship, follow a cause, be within groups and collaborate, whatever it is, that is right. That is your North Star. That's something you're meant to do. But the sign to know whether the particular people involved, the particular love of the particular collaborators or friends, is which side of the fence this falls on. So on one side, there is a sense that everything is always a competition and nobody commits. So if this is around a love relationship, if you're always kind of battling with the person and they never will commit and they say they're going to turn up for you know, a meeting or a date and then they don't and they pull out at the last minute or if you're working with people and they are always battling with each other about who's going to get the the glory and they, they never want to you know put in their fair share then it, that, that's the sign that you're on the right path but you're with the wrong people if on the other hand things move quickly and easily everybody kind of inspires each other so in a love relationship if there's a lot of kind of you know, real energy in a really similar way of looking at things. So this really is about, you know, you kind of almost take on a philosophical cause and you have a creative inspiration and there's lots of passion, then that's the sign that it's the right thing. So it really depends. You have enough information, Spirit is saying, to know whether this is the right person, the right pathway, or the right people. Actually, I think it's the right pathway, love or, or righting wrongs or having a cause that's part of who you are but it's it's really more a question about whether it's the right people so let's ask what you don't know but which could be helpful for you okay 
I think this is where you're in this side of the thing because I don't think this will really be an issue. I think that you've got all the information that you need. There's not anything you don't really know if you're feeling in, in sync. You you together will be able to deal with this, you know, in love or in career or whatever it is. But where this is occurring, what you don't know is how deep-seated this is. So, and even your response to it's very deep-seated. There's something with the Ten of Pentacles reverse, and then we've got the Knight of, of Pentacles reverse as well too. There are people in this situation at the moment that are just completely not committed to it. And in fact, they, they could be quite duplicitous. They're, if, they're, if it's in a workplace, they might talk all the right words, but the reality is they're out for themselves. And they'll, they'll cut and run whenever it suits them. If it's a cause, then there are people who might say all the right words and tweet all the right things and do all of that sort of stuff. But the reality is that they are not committed to this at all and they will go to the highest bidder. So, And there's a lot of disharmony as a result of that. You're also around, if that's the case, people who, who don't have the skills they're claiming to have. So there's a very strong message for those who are the sign is there that what you don't know is what's underneath this. And it's a very strong sign of course correct that you what you want to do is the right thing to do but you're not with the right people because this energy doesn't fit with this over here so i feel if you if you kind of know you know what the almost if you know that all of these sort of energies you know are kind of like a a bad sort of you know lack of fairness in resources duplicity and 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 you know stealth and cunning you know, kind of like the, the breaking up of energies, the, the sort of pretender to the throne type of energy. If you, if you know that you're with the right people, that's what you together are battling in some way. But if you aren't with the right people, you're actually experiencing that there. Very interesting. I think for many of you, I, mean, I thought at first it was about love and it could be. It could be that if you're with the wrong sort of person, it brings out all this sort of energy because there's a lot in their personality that's, that's not particularly well aligned. But if it's about a cause, then then if, you, if you're with the wrong people, it's worse than if you weren't with anybody at all. I think that's what it's basically saying. It's, you've got to find your own people to, to move forward. Otherwise, it would be better to sort of just keep moving forward on your own to start with because you're, you're on the right pathway for you. Okay, so let's have a look at some spiritual aspects of this. Let's see if we can get some more information around this for you as to its spiritual significance, the pathway that you're on. Blockages, the sacred elephant. Mislead, yeah. It's all saying, it's all saying it should be as clear as to you. That's what it's saying. Because <clears throat> if you're on this side of the fence where it's not, you know, all this murky stuff, you're going to hit blockages. And it, this says when you hit a dark wall ask the sacred elephant to help make it fall so it's i think in that case it's make it fall by liberating you from that energy so that you can find the right energy but if you if you know that you're on the right path and together you're hitting that block that difficult wall then this is for the two of you to or the three of you however many it is to rise above that and to use that kind of energy to break through the blockages but there's definitely risks of people misleading you and taking you off the path at the moment this says, beware the gifts that you give or receive. Appreciation is key. Yeah, like if these people, if, they, if you're with the wrong people, you may find that sometimes they blow hot and cold. Like sometimes they're your best friend and, and so forth. But at other times you just think, oh no, this is a bit out of whack. I seem to be, you know, half the time they're appreciating me and working with me. The rest of the time they're competing with me and they don't follow through. There's something about understanding that this is part of the sign as well. People, you know, it's that saying that, you know, when people show you who you are, who they are, believe them. I, I would say do that. Watch what people do, not what they say. There's lots of people who can say lots of pretty words, but it doesn't follow through with action. And at the end of the day, we are what we do. So let's have a look and see what we can get from the Life at Sea deck for some more 3D sort of energy around this. If this is the spiritual thing, it's about understanding when the blockages are things that you can work on together and when it's a sign of this more toxic energy, what on a 3D level would help you on your pathway? Perspective. Yeah, it is all about perspective. And that's why the signs are there. You have everything you need to know, definitely. And begin. So it is saying that what you are, and again, it's, it's saying you're on the right path, but whether it's begin, 
being confident that you're with the right people and just move forward or whether it's begin again with with yourself just with yourself you are enough anyway and you will draw the, the right people if you understand that it's all about perspective so think about it think about what the signs are it's all there you know spirit is saying you know pile three you really know at best this was confirmation for you so let's see what supports we can get for you in this as well sorry just had to stop for a second because i thought somebody was coming to the door so supports for you from goddesses or archetypes firstly pets one we and hell wow okay so it's interesting because this is a uh, American Indian goddess and she is a goddess of peace, peacekeeping and so forth, but she's also a goddess of celebrations and rituals and so forth. So I think that the, she may be here to show again to help you work out are you with the right people or not what are the rituals what are the actions what are the processes do they really honor what they say they're honoring if they do and there's true respect and peace then you're with the right people if they don't their actions don't fit their words then you know you're not until you're sure of that hell here the the goddess of the underworld is about keeping your secrets keeping your counsel not sharing things until you know She's a very fierce protector, so as long as you take the, the decision to, to keep silent when necessary, she can help you keep the secrets you need to keep till you know whether you're with the right people or not. Let's see what divine animal totems can also assist you. Wolverine, fierceness, I'm going to put that with hell. When you need to be, Wolverine will help you be fierce. If you have to go, in, if you're going to a battle with the right people, you can be fierce together. If you need to be fierce to break away from this more negative energy, you can do that as well with Wolverine's help. And Sacred Ivorous, learning. So look at this as a learning process. Look at it as a learning process spiritually about when the blockages are. Uh, for you to to overcome and when they are for you to turn away you know look, use it as learning about understanding who to trust and so forth sacred ibis will help you with that okay so to finish off i want to look at some astrology so the guidance of the stars and then we have a card from the wisdom of the golden path as a sort of summation for you pile three so firstly astrology for you guidance of the stars the waning crescent moon. Now, a waning crescent moon is about loss and sacrifice and letting go and going back to first principles. So I think it is saying that for many of you, you will need to sort of move away from people that you're around. Probably not everybody. Some of you, it may be that, that you know, if you felt a bit blocked or whatever, you need to let go of certain causes and then focus on the ones that you feel you can really bring in. And if it's a relationship, a love relationship, it may be a sign that it's more likely to be on that more negative side and to let it go. We've got full moon as well. Okay, the cycles of the moon are important to you, so pay attention to those. This is about manifestation, harvest and release. You are meant to be successful. This is why we had the Wheel of Fortune right at the beginning. And it's like maybe there's a quick win that's coming as well too, which may also be a sign for you that you are on the right path and or with the right people. And the 12th house, yeah, this is keeping secrets till you need to. Also very psychic, very psychically connected. Pay attention to your inner knowing. It is actually pretty much on point. I think this is why Spirit is saying you've got all the information. You know, you've just got to back yourself and trust the information that's coming through. Okay, so to finish off, just going to get a card from the Wisdom of the Golden Path or a kind of final summation of your, your journey on this pathway, Pile 3. Well, that's interesting. That came up. That came up in another one. So some of you might have actually gone to, to more than one reading. So I think this is really just the sign. You know, are you feeling free and able to move forward or are you feeling that you're in bondage to something that's not what it appears? If you feel you're in bondage, that's the sign. You know, course correct. You're on the right pathway for what you want to do in your life and how you want to love, but you're not with the right people. If you don't feel bondage, if you actually feel a sense of sort of freedom moving forward, you know, real connection 
then you may be tilting you and your lover or your collaborator's energy towards freeing others from bondage. So is it your bondage that you need to be freed from or is it a cause that you're following? That will also be a sign for you as to whether you are with the right people because you are on the right path. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.